Hello everybody, this is Mr. Devorot here. You probably just saw the vocab video that I sent out to your child using the story of the th true story of the three little pigs by John Siska. And in that video, we just talked about ing verb endings. So now we're going to talk about how you can also enhance your child's learning about this topic. So let's talk about what's important about vocabulary instruction. First thing is, words become easier sight words when they are highly imageable and a concrete visual comes to the child's head. That's why in my recording, when I did my lesson, I had um, visuals of the definition and different ways that definition is used in the real world. So for example, for making things, I talked about making decisions, uh, building a tower, and having those visuals there will help that sight word pop straight into memory when they're reading it again. Second thing is words for sight word learning should purposely be chosen from texts that the children are reading. Personally, when I did my lesson, I picked three specific words that showed each of the unique ing verb endings and how it can be an oddball, keep the same spelling, or it removes the letter e. This is important very important that you choose yourself the words that you want to do so that way you have a purpose in teaching and with that purpose will become a better recognition with sight learning sight word learning excuse me words stick through careful attention to meaning sound and spelling you can also notice that in my presentation i always listed the definition i sounded out the word and then we looked at the spelling where I provided the base word, the ing ending, and then provided the compounded word together. And we looked how it changed um, with the different ing endings. Doing this will help them see it over and over again. They'll have three different parts of their brains listening and working on this word, and that will help them learn with sight words. Using word sorts to recognize similar letter patterns, as that was the activity that was at the end of my lesson, and I hope you guys got to help them out with. And those are always really beneficial as they get to start doing hands-on activities. And then sight words that are learned are not solely learned by sight. And once again, that's using visual, audio, um, spelling cues. And doing all three of those activates different parts of the brain, which increases memorization. Now we need to create an extensive vocabulary learning environment. Extensive means being pointful, directing them towards it, and just uh, having a more direct learning environment. So you should give them meaning, pronunciation, and spelling like I did in my PowerPoint. You should explicitly demonstrate how you would learn the word. So I personally broke it up for the students where I did the base word, the ing word, and then saw what the differences were. We should directly tell them what words they should be looking for. So at the start of my reading, I said, let's look for ing ending words and we'll uh, explore a few of those. So by telling them what they should be looking for, they will be much more attentive to find those words. You should always include examples, and we should be hands-on. So if you want to do more hands-on practice at home, you can ask your child to make you something. It could be making you breakfast, making a decision for you. Uh, maybe they could make you a block tower. Any of those would work. A good follow-up activity that you could do with a child based on this lesson is this table that I provided for you right here. Each category has a base word, ing ending, and a final word. In these categories, one of them has a question mark. The goal here is to fill in that box that has a question mark. So if you look at the first one, the base word is jump, and then there's the ing ending. So we would put the words together to do jumping, and that would be the original spelling, so j-u-m-p-i-n-g. And your child can work down the list where it has them work on a variety of each category where they can fill in the blank. Another good follow-up activity to do is putting words to pictures. This is higher order development as they are looking at the picture, deciphering what they are doing in that picture, and then they are putting that picture to words 
and then they're putting that word under the correct categorization. So as you see, I only provided three just because we don't have a lot of space on the PowerPoint. But jumping, same spelling, biking, it removes the letter E. And of course, lying down or laying down is the oddball. So you can do this where uh, if they're really confident and you think they need a little bit more of a challenge, this is a great exercise for differentiation. Here's what not to do while teaching. Try your best not to get frustrated with your child. They're trying their hardest and to have a teacher, peer, or parent yelling at them destroys their confidence and it reduces their motivation in order to learn. Don't do the work for them either. I know it can be really easy if you have a busy day and it will go along with don't try to rush their learning where we get very busy and we just want to get this over with. Allow your child to have time, be patient, and allow them to work it out themselves as it is much more beneficial for them to go through the entire process than having you solve it for them. And lastly, don't be distracted. If you provide your 100% attention onto the child while they're doing it, they're going to feel a lot more confident in their learning as they know they have someone to go to if they need help. Some books that you can use to uh, have additional learning for this lesson are The Day the Crayons Quit by Drew Daywalt that's also illustrated by Oliver Jeffers. This is a fun story about crayons that complain to a child who likes to draw, and they write a lot of funny letters to the child. This is plenty of examples of ING verb endings, and you can have the child place a few of those words, not all of them, into one of the three ING ending categories. See if they can find one of each. Another book that you can do is The Lorats by Dr. Seuss. It's a fun Dr. Seuss book to read, and children love Dr. Seuss, as well as having a very good moral ending. This book also has plenty of ING verb examples, and maybe this time you can ask them to try to find only one type of the word sort. So maybe you want to look for same letter endings, so jumping or leaping, something like that. Finally, the last book is The Stinky Cheese Man and Other Fairly Stupid Tales by John Siska and illustrated by Lane Smith. This is a really fun book that tells a lot of other fairy tales and is also similar to the book done in the lesson, so it's going to be very relevant to the child. There's plenty of ING verb endings and examples, and students can choose a few of these to focus in on and sort and just practice getting that memorization of those ING ending patterns. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you are able to work with your child and help them better themselves with these ING endings and these words that they are learning. And here are my references.